All right, in finals week. So, um, you know, it's been a good week. Guys are doing really well in school. Um, we practiced Monday, Tuesday, took yesterday off. I went recruiting, just got back. Um, so guys are, guys are a little bit mentally drained, so I won't go as long as I did. It went about an hour and a half Tuesday, and then we'll go about an hour and a half today. So um, injury report, every, um, Cullen is slowly making his way back. Um, his decision will have to be made before January 5th um, if he's going to medically redshirt. And that'll be, only, that'll be up to him. That won't have anything to do with me. Uh, it'll have to do with me as a father, but it won't have anything to do with our program or our team. It'll be all his decision. Um, Arthur will be back next week, the 18th. I guess it's next week. Should be back participating in stuff the 18th. Fingers really good shape. He's been working really, really hard to stay in shape. Uh, so he's really eager to get back. So we're, we're, we're happy to get back. Jordan practiced on Tuesday. Um, so he'll be, he practiced Monday and Tuesday. So he'll be available to play on Saturday. Don't know if I'll put him into action just because I don't know if he's ready uh, game shape to play. So that'll be a, that'll be a coach's decision. That won't be a, um, I know everybody wants it to be a discipline decision. It has nothing to do with discipline. It has to do where he's not been healthy. So um, he's done really, really well. His concussion has, has no, no after effects. And um, so we'll see. But he probably won't play. I just, he's not ready to play yet. On to the game. I'm really excited. They're, they got a good team, took Florida to overtime. Uh, beat Northwestern State last night. Um, very, very athletic team, very dangerous team. So it's one of those games that um, if we're not prepared to play or we don't come ready to play, that they could beat us. And uh, I think our guys will be ready. I think they'll be focused. Uh, but they're a very talented group. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But we got to be, we got to come ready to play. And the biggest thing for us is to get better. Um, and try to improve on what we're doing um, as far as team stuff. And, and we got to continue to get better as far as team stuff. So uh, that's our main focus for the next three or four games is to get really, really good at what we're doing offensively and defensively and see what, see what happens. So, um, But they're dangerous, and, and it's a good game for us. So we'll see where we, where we are as a team. Well, I think the keys, they're very athletic. Um, they're, they're tall, they're long. Um, they'll cause us some problems, matchup problems, kind of like Balpo did. So um, it'll be a situation where there could be some guys that don't play just because of matchup situations and how we want to play. But uh, we're going to work really hard today, prepare for them. But you know, I, I don't want to do too much because then I drain my guys with finals going on. And but. Uh, we'll be really precise today and, and do, do some stuff and, and get ready. But got to keep them from making three-point shots. Got to be able to guard ball screen. And they do a lot of actions. And I think they're going to come in here and change how they run different. That's just their coaches. That's how he coaches. They could come in here and run eight or nine different offensive things. So we'll just have to be ready for that. Yeah, I don't think that's why. I don't think that's one reason why I don't think he'll play Saturday. I mean, it's not on him. He's just not ready to play. He's he's not. He missed 12 days of any kind of practice, any kind of running, any kind of car, and he was already behind in shape wise. So he's worked really hard. I got to give him credit. He's worked his butt off. And um, you know, if it if we get in foul trouble, or if something comes up, then then he'll he'll be available to play. He'll dress, but. Uh, I don't know if I'll put him in there. I'll see today because I got two more practices. We'll see how he does. Coach, we've talked through the years a lot about two point defense versus three point defense. Mm -hmm. You guys are in top 20 right now in three point defense, which hasn't been the case the last couple of years because of the way you guys play it. Is there something more to it than just teams aren't hitting their shots, or is it Cam and Alex on the side? What, what's the. Well, I think, it's, I think it's our length, I think it's our versatility. Uh, I think it's our quickness to the ball that we haven't had in the past. We had Kendall and we had Tony, 
Um, but I think we've, we've concentrated on it a little bit, um, trying to get better at closing out. We've been working a lot, lot, lot of time and practice on closing out, uh, probably more than we ever have. And, you know, I think our guys are just making teams take tough shots. And I think what helped us the last game is when you switch, it takes away jump shots. And when you do that, then you, then you don't give up open shots or, or uncontested shots. And I think that's helped us. No. It isn't what it has been the last couple of years. No, I think that I think that's hurt us because of a couple of games we played this year is offensive rebounding. And um any time that you play a team that gets a lot of offensive rebounds, then your two point percentage is gonna go down. Or I mean it's gonna go up. So, you know, if we keep teams off the offensive glass, then our two point field goal percentage is usually pretty low. I, I think they've always had confidence. I just think they're just trying to figure it out as a group. I think it's just uh, not being familiar with each other. Not, you know, a lot of it's like I've said over over time, that's trust. And now I think they trust one another. They're, you know, guys are being in the right space and or right places at the right time. And if they're not, they're able to communicate and say, hey, we can't let that happen again. So I think that's been a big, that's been a big emphasis on us and, and trying to get them to talk. We've been doing a lot of drills in practice trying to get them to talk and not have the coaches talk. Um, you can get into a habit where coaches are doing all the talking and the kids don't talk. So we've been trying to make them huddle, make them talk, not just one or two of them, all of them. So I think that's helped us a little bit. The versatility of the defense going from the zone one game to the switching man and that, um, is that because of the personnel? Or is that just because there's some new faces you guys are kind of more set in your ways last Well, year? I just think we want to do some things differently that we haven't done in years past. And I think one thing that, that you can do is if you change defenses, it's hard. You know, it's just like I talked to Coach K this week, and I was really impressed about how he went up to Wisconsin and they switched everything and kind of took Wisconsin out of their offense, took him out of the, the swing offense. And, you know, to me, that's, that's part of learning and evolving as a coach. And I just reached out to him wanting to know what his thinking was on that. So that's part of getting better as coaches. And, you know, I'm just I'm able to tap into some resources that a lot of people can't tap into that help me. And, you know, we're going to do a lot of things different that we're going to change a lot of things during each game plan. And we're going to be versatile enough to do a lot of different things defensively and a lot of different things offensively because I think our um, depth, I think our versatility, and I think our athletic ability, um, re you know, allows us to do that. From a coaching standpoint, I don't think he comes back. I mean, but he hasn't practiced yet. I mean, he's going to miss. He wasn't healthy till February last year, and he's going to miss 12 games. Could miss 10 to 12 games. And I'm going to meet with the doctors after practice today. But I'm going to do what's best for Cullen, not what's best for my team or what's best for me. And I know he's feeling a lot of pressure because he thinks he's got to come back for me as the coach, as his dad. And I think he's feeling a lot of pressure that he's got to come back for his teammates. But at the end of the day, he's got to do what's best for him. And, and that's with all our kids. You know, I, I think Arthur would be in the same boat if he hadn't redshirted in junior college. And I think there's still some – there's still some logistics that we have to figure out with that, with him, that, you know, that could happen with him. But it's whatever's best for each kid. Coach Delaney seemed to have kind of found his room the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Something you told him? Or yeah, quit shooting jump shots. No, he's – I just – he's just one of those kids. I'll tell you what we've done, and I know you guys have watched us. I've really – I've really tried the first four-minute game trying to run stuff for him, to try to get him going, because he's one of those guys that will sit back. And I think he sat back early in the year, especially like when Cullen was playing with Hugh and, and the original star. I think he sat back like he did a year ago and kind of watched those other guys play. And I've tried, to, I've tried to get stuff going to him early in the game to get him going. I think that's helped him. Shooting those great, like, little hooks, little 
jump shot it. Joe was passing the ball inside there. Do you think we're going to probably try to be more successful going inside this year? Well, I think – I don't think it's going inside. I think we're getting paint scores because we're driving the ball. I don't think we're getting paint scores where we're just posting the ball up and throwing it in there. I think our driving ability, I think getting those big guys with angles closer to the rim where they don't have to they're, – they're not capable of doing what Alex and Cam are right now. Will they be? Yes, they will because we'll develop them. But I think a lot of our points in the paint are coming on drives and, and passes, and, and we're able to post our guards. Our guards are as big as anybody in the league and anybody in the country. So, you know, we, pa we posted Sam a couple times at Valpo, and he did some good things. And, you know, it's just trying to get those guys in the paint to play to those strengths. But I think our big guys with JJ and Obach and Joe and, you know, Devin, you know they're not they're not the inside presence we've had in the years past, but I think they'll become that. And I think with Timmy Williams next year, we had somebody that's got major inside presence. So we'll try to always do that. Try to get stuff going to the rim and get to the foul line first. Yesterday, the UTEP athletic director said he wants to try and get a series going. Right. Basketball. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. I just phone calls. But uh, Lamont does my scheduling. I haven't had any discussion with them about scheduling the game. Now I've made it comment that I would I'd listen, but I, I we haven't done anything. I don't know, and I don't know what football does. I do my scheduling; they do their scheduling. So um, I don't know where that came from. That's on them, but I haven't had personally any discussion if we're going to play them or not. And I sign off on that. So uh, I I don't know if I'd be open to. I'd think about it. Always. always. I sign off on all our schedules. That's the way it's always been. So. Do you have a drop dead date on Cohen and Arthur? Well, Arthur's going to come back for sure. He'll be back. He'll be back. Um, I think I said this earlier. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He'll be back on the 17th or 18th, Jeff. 18th. I think it's the 17th or 18th. I think he's cleared. He's had his stitches out for a week. Uh, everything's going good. His swelling's down. Um, he, he's, you know, doing stuff on the floor. Like I said, working. A he's in really good shape. But a lot of it's going to depend on how he's catching the ball and all that. So it'll, it'll depend once he gets his last x-ray. He'll have another x-ray. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm just giving you a hard time. Sometimes I forget if I said it or not. But I thought I tried to cover most of it. Right. Well, I think Hugh, you can go to Hugh and, and Dee Dee. I think what Hugh was alluding to was the only one that's been proven to score the ball other than it was Cullen. And so when Cullen was out, I think Hugh thought that he had to do a little bit more because he really wasn't sure if those other guys could do it yet because they're new. I mean, that's just – that goes back to the trust thing. And all the thing I've told you is, hey, you trusted us when you came here because I told him at dinner. I can remember the exact conversation. I go, at the end of the day, you got to trust somebody. And he ends up coming here and having a great career. But it's like I told him the other day. I go, remember what I told you at dinner. you got to trust somebody. you got to trust those other guys that they're going to make the right play and don't put yourself in a situation where it's not a good shot or it's a, a bad – and I think he's done that. I think he's, he's really done a better job with that. But I totally understand where he's coming from. And, and that's why I've tried to ease that deal where I'm able to play Timmy a little bit. And that gives Hugh a little bit of rest if we're pressured or it gives him a little bit of rest mentally where he doesn't have to run the offense and also look for a shot. But I just told him, I said – Think about the times in the last three years where you've passed up shots. And there's, you know, I can go through every game the last three years where he's passed up six, seven, eight shots. Well, if he takes those and makes half of them, he's at 10 points a game. So that's what I'm trying to, and he's just got to let the offense come to him. We're a lot better when he lets the offense come to the second side of the floor or ball reversal. We're a lot better offensively than the first option we shoot a contested shot. But I think he's he's getting there. 
he'll figure it out. He's a winner, and he's figured it out so far. And we're five and three, and you know we got a goal set to try to get get some wins before Christmas. But you know, I, our biggest thing is just continue to get better. And a lot of these guys are getting comfortable. Like Sam's playing a lot, lot better. I think X is feeling a little bit more comfortable. Um, you know, I think O's coming along. I mean, O made a great post move, and Valpo's the best move he's made since he's been here. You know, a little duck in, left hand, a little right hand hook. Um, and Devin's playing, to me, I think Devin's playing out of his mind. I mean, I'm glad to see it, but I think he's playing at a high, high level that none of us, not even me, would expect him to play at. And that's, that's just a credit to him because he's stayed the course and he's developed. Right. Um, is Could happen. So well, I just I made a comment earlier. I said this this team with, you know, Monroe, Louisiana Monroe is very similar. Where if they go small, we'll have to go small, and there'll be some guys that could go into this game and not play. And you know, it's one of those things that we're going to do what's best for us to win the game. And it, if it's you know taking advantage of our size and making them guard our size, then that's what it'll be. But however, I think it's all dictated, at least to me, I think it's all dictated in the sense that how are we going to defend? It's not offensively. I think it's always been dictated on how we're going to defend people. I mean, I, you always want our league to do well. I mean, we're paying attention to that. Um, but I won't start thinking about that till after Christmas. But, I mean, we're watching, we're watching the games. We see what's going on. But you're not surprised that you've struggled so much on the road this year. You guys obviously want to know a lot of losses from other teams. Does that surprise you? Um, I don't know if it surprises me. It's not – I mean, it's hard to win on the road. And unless, unless you have experience in doing it, and you know how to do it, and it's, you know, it's a it's a fine, it's a fine line to win it on the road. And you know, I just think some teams have to figure it out. And we've been fortunate enough; we've done a pretty good job. But I mean, if you looked at the landscape of college basketball, I mean, there's people beating people that, you know, schools that I've never heard of. But I mean, I I know of schools I've never seen their teams. But I mean, there there's a lot of upsets going on that. You know, Division Two teams being Division One teams. There's teams that are just transitioning. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of parity, but anybody can beat anybody on a given day, and that's that's what that's the hardest thing about trying to teach your kids. Oh, I didn't even know that. When you, when you see that stuff, is it, does that stuff crazy for you? I just think it's anything to bring interest to the game. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, I never really thought about picking a top ten hair <laughs> hair deal. Your so. Hair was too. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it anymore. So, uh, but it's coming back fast. So. I would rather have the top three spots of players, not hairdos. <laughs> So I think we all, I think all of our coaches would want that. But um, you know, it's it's recognition for our conference. But I mean, I I didn't even. I mean, it's. I don't recruit hair. I don't recruit hair, and I don't get caught up in you know. As long as there, there's a reason behind it, then I'm good with it. Coach, you mentioned uh, talking to Coach K this past weekend. Right. Tap into different resources. How, how often do you do that? And I try to do it as much as I can, JP, just because I know a lot of people and I've been in this business for a long time and I, I, I'm able to reach people. i got good relationships. I just think I have to do that to evolve. I, I don't, you know, it's like I've, I've messed with Jeff before and I told him, I go, I won 27 games last year and everybody acts like I should have won 30. And that's fine, but that was not an easy task. That's a harder task than the one I have right now. I'm having a lot more fun coaching, and I have to work a lot harder because I got a new team. But last year was not easy. And I told myself a long time ago, if I ever got a chance, I got to continue to get better. And that's not just on what I do or how we play or what my program's about, but how can I make our program better? And I think I learned that from Steve. I think we evolved 
over these eight years to where our program's known nationally, but it's how we play. It's, it's like I've said all along. We haven't changed anything offensively and defensively in eight years. We just do it at a high level. And we put different pieces into that, into that you know, deal where we use different strengths of different players, but it's the same. We haven't changed a lot. But I do try to reach out to coaches that I really, really – I mean, I watch a lot of games. I mean, everybody thinks that we just coach practice for two hours and go home and hang out. And I watch a lot of games, and I'm trying to get better. Or how can I make my program better? Or how, how can I reach that point where my program's like some of these others where, you know, I know what we're getting into. But i got to try to make my team better. And this year has been a challenge because of the injuries and a new team. So I'm just doing everything I can to make my team better. And I, I kind of took a chance at Valpo and did some things we haven't done. And we really, really did a good job. So that was trusting my guys that we could do it, and we did a nice job. Anything else? Greg, last year you kind of had a team where you can almost say, you know, Griffin handled those four, Cameron Griffin. Right, or just, or just throw it in the block, just dribble down, throw it. Rebounding and defense and right. honoring ball possession. But are those things more important on this type of team? Yeah, this the ball the ball control is a lot more important. They just don't understand it yet. They don't they don't understand that you got to keep it under twelve. I mean, they're trying, but I have to bring it up during a game. Like I'll look at the stat sheet and goes, guys, we got seven turnovers with six minutes to go in the first half. They just don't understand. Some of those young guys don't understand it because in high school you just thought, well, if we turn it over, we're just going to get it back and we'll go down. We'll just outscore you. That, it doesn't work like that here. Um, rebounding, loose balls, and turnovers are going to be key to this team winning. And now I have to – I think Hugh understands it. I know Dede understands it. But those are the only veteran guys that have played a lot of minutes that understand that value in possession is huge. And you can ask them. Every time I go to our games, the last thing I put on the board is limit turnovers. Value the ball. That's every game. And until they figure that out, they won't be as good as they could be. Yeah, they're figuring out defense, but I think a lot of it is you can go back to our USC game and then our uh, New Mexico State game. I think a lot of it is the urgency of how they guarded. I don't, I don't know if their urgency in the USC game was as urgent as it could have been. And I think it was the New Mexico State game because, to be honest with you, they didn't want to get embarrassed. They'd already lost one at home. I think their urgency was they didn't want it to happen again. Yeah, they they understand it now, and and it's it's a process, and and I think we're playing terrific defense. I thought we played terrific defense all year. I just think there's little things that we can get better at that we've had breakdowns that have compounded. Like you can't have a little breakdown and be one possession, and you can't do that three straight times, especially late in the game because we've been at, we've been in games till the last five minutes and we've had little breakdowns, and that multiplies and that hurts you. You'll lose games that way. They understand that now. They've seen it enough on film that peer pressure and peer embarrassment, it does wonders for you. Is that a little bit like and sometimes on offense, like you're waiting for someone else to score? Yeah, I think they do. I think I think they I think D D was always waiting for Cullen or Hugh to store early and always waiting for uh, Alex and Cam to check in. They're not here. They're not walking through this. No, I just think it's it's a learning thing with trust as far as just playing team defense. They've been brought up in this system of AAU basketball and high school basketball where there's not a lot of team defense. It's just like, you didn't score. As long as my guy doesn't score, then I did my job. That's that's not the way team defense is. And that's the way we're – that's the sad thing about the way we're teaching kids now. In AAU games, in high school, we're not teaching them, hey, the ball scores, not your guy. The ball scores, so you got to help your teammates. And it's just like AAU. We talk about, oh, somebody had 40 points. Well, then the other kid feels like he had 40 points on all of y'all. He didn't have 40 points on one guy. That's what. That's the. That's the misconception that we're we're losing out on in basketball. And I think that's one thing that the Europeans have grasped. But it's all about team. And we've got to change that. What's that? And Coach K 
<laughs> just we're just hey, we're just trying to make basketball better. Well, what are we shooting? As a team? Yeah, 68. I think it's like 67. 68. Is it 68? Yeah. What did we shoot last year? 70. We're probably 2% off pace. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably two free throws a game. So you want to go to 70? No, I think if you can shoot team free throws at 70, I think that's pretty good as a team. Now, I want them to shoot 75. That's the goal. But yeah, we got to make better free. I mean, we got to shoot the ball better. I mean, Didi had, Didi, he could have had back-to-back twenty-point games. He missed three, three back ends and one-on-ones, or made. I think he had four chances at it, and he made two. He made one of them. So I mean, there's, we got to make free throws, and I think they know that. We, the thing is, they got to concentrate like they do at the end of the game, the whole game. That's I think that's just a growing, growing deal. You guys good? All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.